devotional reading is Psalm 121. Psalm number 121. In the Old Testament, the book is Psalms. Psalm number 121. When you found it, you will discover these words. I lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keepeth Israel will not stumble, will not slumble. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Father God, we thank you. God, we glorify you. Lord, we lift you. God, we praise you. Lord, we honor you, Father God, for you are God. Lord, you kept us. Lord, you blessed us. Lord, you keep right on blessing us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we realize that our, our help comes from you. We realize, Father God, that you are the one who keeps us as you have kept Israel. Lord, we realize that because you have made us, you made heaven and earth, we ought to be grateful. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to, our lives to roll on just a little while longer, for giving us another portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, that as we are rooted and grounded in you, you won't allow our feet to be removed. We thank you, Lord, that you don't slumber, neither do you sleep, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you see all, you, you imagine all, you bless through all, and you keep all. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that we, we understand that you have power in your right hand. We thank you, Lord, that you don't allow us to be struck down by day nor by night. And Lord, we bless your name today. Lord, we thank you for another chance to come to the house of the Lord, to lift our voices unto you, to praise you one more time, to thank you one more again, Father God. For Lord, you are God and you are God alone. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us again, Father God, and again, Father God, and again. Lord, we thank you for your word, Father God. We thank you that your word is in good soul. We thank you that your word is, is from you and from you alone. We thank you that your word is true, Father God, and your word makes us who we are. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us through your word. Bless your word to spring up an everlasting fountain in us, Father God, that we will always look to your word for truth, for righteousness and development. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to make your presence known in the room, that your Holy Spirit, Father God, will, will, will be granted to us in power and conviction, that your Holy Spirit will lead us, guide us, direct us, and protect us. That your Holy Spirit will, will push us to the point where we lose ourselves in the service. Where we will honor you, Father God, for you're worthy of all the honor, all the grace, and all the power. 
Lord, we thank you that you have dominion, Father God. We thank you that you know us better than we know ourselves. And Lord, we ask you to break up every foul of wild, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you move through our minds and our hearts, Father God, in such a way, Father God, that we will honor you and honor you alone. Now we come here today, Father God, hurting. We come here today in trouble. We come here today with a bad week, Father God. Lord, we ask you to bless us in the name of Jesus. That we will be refreshed when we leave here. That we will be renewed when we leave here. That we will be, Father God, abandon our evil ways when we leave here. Bless us with conviction. That we will be convicted, Father God. That our lives will be turned over in your name. That we will run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about the God we serve. That he never sleeps, nor does he summer. That he watches over us and he protects us. Let us tell men, women, boys, and girls that in this service, Father God, you convicted us to turn away from our evil ways. And Father, we ask you to give somebody the victory as they go through trials. Father God, somebody may be hurt, hurting and somebody may be aching, Father God, from, from the wares of this world. We ask you to lift them up. We ask you to keep them, Lord. We ask you to give them the calm assurance that everything through you is all right. And Lord, we ask you to give us the victory. Victory over the devil. Victory over his imps. We ask you, Father God, to, to cast away every assignment of the devil. That he will not have his way in our lives. Father God, that we will be blessed by you. And we will run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of our God. Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. It's in the mighty, powerful, and humble name of Jesus Christ we come. And we thank you for it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you. 
chapter 25 verse 28 Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28 in the Old Testament the book is Proverbs the chapter is 25 the verses 28 you found that you will discover these words reading from the New King James Version. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. I want to talk about, Lord, teach me control. Please, no. Lord, Please. teach me control. Yes, Lord. Life has a way of controlling us, and we sometimes do not control it. Life has a way of throwing curveballs, sliders, knuckleballs, well, breaking pitches, where we can't see them coming. And all of a sudden, it breaks from the left to the right, and then it drops right down. Life, life as we know it today has a way of getting us upside down instead of right side up. Life, life just happens. And as life happens, we oftentimes tell our children when they complain that it's just a way of life. Well, many times, many have said, Mama didn't tell me it was going to be like this. And then others will say, Mama told me that life wasn't going to be easy. Others will tell you that Daddy tried to prepare me for this, but because Daddy lived in a different generation, he didn't see this was coming either. Right? Life is full of upside down situations. Situations that we can't predict. Situations that we, we cannot really live with. Life has a way of messing us up. Have you been messed up by life? Has life thrown you a twister? Has life caused you to stop and think? Has life gotten you at a, a crossroad and you don't know what to do and how to do it? You don't know who to call on and the person that you did call on let you down? Well, even this week, even, even this week, somebody had life happen in a way that they never would have thought it would happen. Life gives us health challenges. Breathing, walking, is not as easy as we thought it would be. <laughs> Carrying out our daily routines like washing dishes, sweeping and mopping the floor has become cumbersome to some of us. Yeah. And young people, you don't have to get old well, before life begins to take a toll on your life. Adam and Eve really messed it up for us. We were born to live forever, and all of a sudden, sin shows up, and life started happening like never before. 
Yeah, Adam had the privilege of walking with the almighty self-existing God, the God who no one created, the God who just is God and always will be God. He had the privilege of walking with him in the cool of the day. Yes, sir. Having a great conversation with God. Yes. God making him promises and God doing some things with him and, and God telling Adam, now everything you see, Adam, I want you to name it. I want you to claim it. That's what naming and claiming really came from. Well, amen. I want you to have dominion over it. Amen. And you can do with it whatever you can. All right. Mosquitoes we kill. Fish we catch. Because God has given us dominion over everything that walks, swims, and creeps on this earth. But when sin showed up, Yes, sir. That sin nature has been passed down from our father Adam. Now it exists in us in our bloodstream. Right. And therefore we love sin. And don't get so holy till you think you don't like sin. Well. Sin has a way of making you enjoy it. Right. Sin will take you to your highest mountaintop. Sin will, will make you so extremely in love with it that you just got to have it every day of your life. Lord have mercy. Lord. Sin, it's not your sin, it's Adam's sin that got us in trouble. And because of sin, S-I-N, because of S-I-N, because of sin, S-I-N, now we have sins, S-I-N-S. It's because of, what, because of what Adam did. Yes, sir. Adam walking with God, he has everything he needed. He didn't have a Jaguar, but he didn't need one. Right, right. He didn't have an SUV. He didn't have a hoopty, but he didn't need one. Adam had the privilege, the honor, a great opportunity to come to God just on his own terms and talk to God whenever he wanted to. Kind of like we do now. We have the privilege now. To talking to God anytime we want to. And it costs us nothing. That's why I don't understand why women, women and men fill coliseums for a man to pray for. And they pay big bucks for a man to pray for them. And they take their tithe money for a man to pray for them. When you can go to God all on your own, all by yourself and say, Lord, teach me control. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This world is out of control. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, this world that we live in is just totally out of control. It's in the midst of chaos. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where we are, it doesn't matter how far we go, it doesn't matter if we're in the great United States of America, it doesn't matter if we're on foreign soil, this world is upside down. We used to say, we used to say that that, that third world country over there is in chaos. We can't say that anymore because third world countries are looking at the great powerful United States of America and say, wow, they're out of control. Yes, sir. They, 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 they vote in sin. Well, they legislate and lobby for sin. Yes, sir. Other countries are looking at this great, powerful dominion that the United States, this reputation that the United States once had, and laughing at us. Because we are totally out of control. How you know we're out of control, preacher? Because men have been able to purchase guns that are not even old enough to buy a house. Men who can who can buy a gun when they won't buy food. Men, men who can who can make a baby when they can't protect the baby. Men, women, boys and girls who spend more time, even if you are an adult, spend more time when you walk in school looking for the metal detector than you are looking for books and computers. This world is, it's a book of bad. It has been turned upside down. 
when same sex is on the rampage and things are out of order, and now it seems like everybody is being desensitized to it. Well, yeah. When children in their parents, parents are, the, these folks so, these they don't need to be any parents. When you have a parent, uh, Brother Miles, who say that my child was just born and he or she is neither male nor female, they are non-binary. Well, Lord have mercy. And then they have the audacity to gall to, to pull God into it and say, God has given my child a choice. Whether they want to be neither male nor female, they are non-binary. When you think of a binary number, uh, Brother Whitlock is either one or zero. Am I right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's no in-between. There's no gray area. I know some people are born with, with, with situations that are out of control and situations that they had no control over. But there are some that are, are born that are non-binary is what they call it. Don't you know some choices God didn't leave for us? Some choices God didn't leave for us to make. <laughs> there are some choices that God made on his own because God is smarter than we are. Amen. He's more intelligent than we are. Amen. And here we are living in this upside down world. Not only is the world messed up, we are messed up. Even in the church. All right. Even in the church, we can't take a stand. Even in the church, we can't even lock in to one thing that the Bible says. Man. I talk to you today, and I, I just want to talk today. I just want to talk. You, you, will you bear with me just talking? We need to ask the Lord. Right. Lord, teach us Amen. control. Yes, Lord. I mean, children are out of control. These children these days came in on a different truck, Brother Or. They got off on a different pickup. They are different. They think differently. They act differently. They carry themselves differently. And therefore, we as seniors must get to a point where we can interlock with them and go down the road together. I just say to you today, the church has missed it. The church has missed an opportunity to commune and collaborate with the community in a terrible way. Well, you know, we, 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 are, we are Christians now and we, we don't do what they do. But you didn't stop doing what you were doing because you got so holy. You stopped doing what you were doing because you just couldn't do it that way anymore. Some people stopped doing what they were doing because they just slept too old to do it. I mean, sin, sin. We, we love sin. We, we, we have a sin nature. That we desire sin. And you can act like you holy in here if you want to. You can turn down your nose at the guy that walks in that don't have it together if you want to. At the end of the day, the bottom line is you didn't stop sinning because you got so holy go feel. You stopped sinning because you just knew it was a mess to keep on doing it. You're not able to do it anymore. You're not able to pop it like you used to pop it anymore. You're not able to hang out all night long and, 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 and do what you used to do anymore. And we need to make sure that our youth and our young people have control of themselves now so when they get our age, they'll have better control of themselves. The, the website called allprodad.com It is a dad's website where men are, are, are teaching uh, children and women uh, the best things for children. This website, All Pro Dad, Pro Dads, lists out 10 pressures that young people are under. Number one pressure that young people are under these days and they are going through stuff that, that's causing issues is image. Uh -huh. They don't see themselves as others see them. The number one thing that young people are struggling with these days is image. Image means how I look and how my body looks. 
And they struggle because social media has told them if you don't get a thousand, two thousand, twenty five hundred likes, you are all messed up. I wanted to stop today just to talk to you because I have attended, I have preached too many young folk funerals that have committed suicide. And it's like every week is one after the other because they have not come to the conclusion that they are worth living. Brave. Ashi. Hazelin. And the light. You are worth living. God loves you. And just like you are, God loves you. He has made you special. Just like you are, regardless of how you shake, regardless of, of how you walk, regardless of how long your hair is or is not, God loves you. And he wants to make sure that you live out your whole life. There are just too many children that are dying because, because their image is not right. And we as seniors must listen to them as small as it is to us, it's a big old thing to them. Because we didn't have internet like they got internet. We had microfish. But we like to know what microfish is. He's on that borderline. He's, he's on that borderline. We had microfilm and microfish. We went to libraries, young people, and when we got to the library, there was a card catalog. All right. And it was number 1345.224. Now you got internet where everything is at your fingertips. You don't even have to type it in anymore. You can just punch a button and speak to it. God spoke. And the earth evolved. And the earth was created. The earth moved. Now we got people who are speaking. And one of the reasons why we think we have arrived and we think that we are just like God is because God spoke and things happen. Now we can just bring up a microphone and speak and things happen. The problem is when we speak and it does not happen as we anticipated it to happen, then we got a bad image of ourselves. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you were born in the hood or not. Your image ought to be one that you're proud of. Be proud of yourself. Walk, walk like you've got some pride. Walk like you've got it going on if you don't have it going on. Nobody in the room, no one in the room has been as broke as I've been. I've been so broke that I couldn't pay attention. Well, let me rephrase that. I've been so broke until I couldn't pay attention. But when I showed up in the interview, I act like I had it going on. Right. I was dressed apart. Yeah, that's right. And then, it, then when I had an afro, I had it combed out. <laughs> now we got 60-year-old men that will, will take a brush and uh, what you call that thing, a sponge. And, and that's how they show up. Let me just share with you. Image is what you are made of. It's what you see. It's what God sees that make you who you are. The second thing is acceptance. How well am I liked? Children these days put so much, so much into whether or not you like me or not. Ask Sister Urban, does she care how much you like her? <laughs> She'll start singing that song, Give Me 50 Feet. Yeah. Go on, go on. We have to understand, if we don't have to be accepted by individuals who are on our level, we have to be accepted by God. Stop putting so much into whether or not people accept you, like you, or how much they care for you. All right. we, we've been running for years, maybe 10 years, I guess. We've been running for years. Everybody buying number 99. I said, I'm never going to buy another jersey with anybody's name on it. By the time we get comfortable with number 99 and spend $135 on number 99, he gets shipped off somewhere. And we want to be accepted based on what we wear. 
based on where we go. Let me tell you, when I grew up, we had patches in our, in our knees and we would try to hide them. They were iron on patches. Because we, we, they were, the, 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 the thigh area and the knee area would wear out first. And we would have those iron on patches that we would stay up nearly all night long iron and make sure that patch didn't come off. I mean, all night long. And it was an embarrassing thing to us. But now you got folks that buy clothes with them ripped all up. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and you got grown folk wearing clothes that are ripped all up. And if they're not ripped enough, they pull a little Clorox on it. And then when you're living in the country, they go out and shoot it with a BB gun so they can put some more holes in it. Life is messed up. But you can survive life. You don't have to give up on life. You have to understand that you can be accepted by God and not accepted by men and be all right. The third thing that all pro dads point out is sex. The, we need to make sure that we understand and teach children to understand the emotional and the physical dangers that come with sex. Intercourse. Into me you see. Intimacy. Yeah. Into me, you see. What it is is regardless, you know, you know why some you know why some people act so many different ways? Because they've been with so many different people. Because when there's intimacy, you exchange body fluids. You exchange, uh, you exchange emotions, you exchange physical characteristics. Why do you think eventually I'm going to look like Sister Davis? <laughs> I heard you, Sister Carl, you said, thank God she ain't going to look like you. <laughs> intimacy, intimacy. And you have to get to a point where you explain to your children, and somebody in this room or somebody on the internet is saying right now, preachers shouldn't be talking about that from the pulpit. That's our problem now. The church has turned a blind eye to it. That's right. That's right. And the average five-year-old can tell you more than you even learned all your life. Right. Say that. Say that. So talks about when she was teaching, you know, she's retired now. That means her money been cut. So if y'all want to give me an offer, I'll take it. When, when she was working, when, when she was working, a five-year-old walks in the room and he's just tearing up the place. She said, sit down. He said, I ain't got to do what you say, dude. Then he turns around and look at the other 21 of them in there and say, and y'all don't have to do what she says do either. I wouldn't dare try that when I was growing up. <laughs> it's because we play out every little thing in the presence of our children, and then they play it out on us when they come in the community. In sex sales. And yet they feeding your children with it. Now here we are, we are fighting over a critical race theory to be taught or not to be taught. In other words, they don't want history of slavery being taught to your children, but they want to tell your children it's okay to have sex. Isn't that yeah. Yeah. It's pressure, it is emotional pressure, it is physical pressure, it is dangerous, and not above that, it is spiritual pressure. So even from the pulpit, even from the church, we got to address the issues. The next thing that they say is pressure is drugs and alcohol. When you have drugs and alcohol, it, it controls your mindset. It controls your body movement. It controls how you feel about yourself. And then some people use it as an excuse to say anything they want to say. They'll tell you in a heartbeat, I'm drunk now, I can tell you just what I've been thinking about you all these years. It causes you to lose control. Let me remind you, we need to pray, Lord, teach me control. Bullying is the next thing. In the past, bullying took place on the playground. But now we're not as, as in tune, Sister Woods, to teaching, taking children on the playground. Now it's happening on social media. I mean, grown folk. 
having fights on social media. Grown people, Kim Kardashian, fighting with, with somebody else. What's that girl name? What's her name? It's a, what's her name? <laughs> they just they they just fighting on social media. They're bullying each other. And and there was no such word as bullying when I was on the playground. Maybe push me around or uh, or maybe say something. And the other thing is, our children have become so frail until every time somebody says something, they have to overreact. If I told the children of today some of the things that I was called growing up, they would break down and cry. We used to run down the basketball court. The other folk used to hang over the bleachers and spit tobacco and, and snuff at us and call us names. Yeah. And we had to keep concentrating. I remember going, going to a newspaper stand at the age of seven, seven at the age of seven years old. Uh, this is the first time I knew racism was real. I put a quarter in there and the machine wouldn't give me my newspaper. So I started snatching on the machine. This big old huge white woman drives up and said, what are you doing here? So some other people told her, well, he put money in the machine and didn't give him a newspaper. Well, I don't want him and call me some names. Thank God my daddy wasn't there. Because daddy just didn't put up with any little and everything. He didn't just give in to any little thing. And I knew then, I knew right then what the marching was about. I knew right then what the parades were about. I found out right then that there was a great separation and we have to know our place. You do know what this Deshaun Watson thing is about, don't you? Deshaun wanted to, wanted to tell them who to hire. Deshaun wanted to tell them who to get rid of. And they want to make sure that he understands this is a plantation that you own and you, blank, need to stay in your place. That's what the whole thing is all about. Everything you look at, that's all it's all about. He stepped out of his place. He tried to be a part. He thought that he could sit at the executive table and help make some decisions. And they had to remind him, you may be the highest paid, but let me just tell you, you need to stay in your place. Let me just tell you that there are grown folk being bullied. And they want to push you around. But you got to have a good image of who you are. The next thing they talk about is college, the grades and the competition. And, and you know, I, I really didn't, I, I didn't have much of a choice at home. I had to get the grades and get it done. And, but our children are put under so much pressure to choose the right college, to get the right grades. And you do know, regardless of what they say, all minds are not created equal. Right. All minds are not created equally. For the fact of the matter is, if a child can get a good grade in conduct, he got it halfway beat. You won't imagine how many good grades I got because I knew how to talk to the teacher. You won't imagine when I got, I, I missed it by two points and I needed an A and I missed it by two points. All I had to do is walk in the room and remind her who I was. She just put that ladder on my paper. We have to get to a point where we teach our young people that college tuition is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, it is real expensive. Yeah. After spending a whole year at the University of North Texas, my daughter comes back and says, Daddy, I only chose engineering because of you. Uh -oh. <laughs> I said, I wish you had told me that $25,000 ago. Yes, sir. I would have told you, you didn't need to do it because of me. I know that's right. I know that's right. It's because of pressure. And it was pressure, Sister Henry, that I didn't even know I was putting on her. I know that's right. So we have to be alert. We have to be wise. We have to, we have to make sure that we listen. Yes. Because it's better to keep your money in your pocket yes, than to just waste it. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that any child who does not know what they want to major in, they need to go to Houston Community College. Yes, 
They need to go to Alvin Community until they get it set, until they get their mind made up. It's because it's, it's, it, it is four times more expensive to go to a major university to make your mind up. You're only paying for them to make their mind up. And the same English, the same math, the same credit that they get at a community college, they can get at the university the same vice versa. That's right. That's right. That's right. Y'all right. call me cheap, but I call it fuel. I tell them that. I call it making sense. I call it control. But see, when children graduate, it, the pressure is even put on them at church. When we bring them up, we say, tell them what you're going to do with your life after you graduate. Yeah. They feel like they got to make sure that you understand they're going to this major university. Yeah. Let me say to you young people, it is better to take one step at a time yeah. than it is to run off with a whole lot of money. That's right. That's right. Pressure, pressure. And check this out. Even folk on their job. They don't want to wear their badge because they're embarrassed about what they do on their job. Let me tell you, as long as you're making an honest day's living and an honest day's pay, let me tell you, it doesn't matter what your job title is. Before I came to Houston, I, I had this big old title uh, back home. I was making $7.16 an hour. I was making $7.16 an hour. And I shot, my title was sanitation engineer. I had my electronics degree, and I went to Lewis Grocery Company, which was a grocery warehouse, and while I was there, they promised me that there's no one else in the whole company that has the degree that you have, therefore, when a vacancy becomes open, you can just slide right in there. We'll make sure that you get right in there. And guess what? Six months later, a three positions came available in the maintenance department. Three positions became available in the maintenance department. They hired three white guys from outside of the plant, brought them in, and didn't even give me a shot. So I had to be under control. I went, up, I went up to the manager's office. I said, Mr. Tom Patterson. I said, I will write a book about Mr. Tom Patterson because he put me and he showed me some things I'd never seen before. I said, Mr. Tom Patterson, why, were, why wasn't I considered from one of those positions? And three of them came up and you all promised me that I would have one. All 380 pounds, six foot seven man, raised himself up from his chair, leaned across the desk, looked me in my face and said, son, I hire who I want to and I put up where I want to be. I didn't, I didn't, Braylon, I didn't take time to remind him that I, they had lied to me. I looked at him in his eyes. This is 1984. I looked in his eyes and I said, thank you, sir. Now I got my own plan. I said, thank you, sir. I walked back down that long stairwell and went to my supervisor. I said, let me cancel all my vacation for 1984. I want to carry it over to 1985. Uh -huh. Made my way 600 miles away, came out here where no family was, and I, I landed a job the first week. I left, went home on that weekend, took all my money out the credit union, and came back, started working on the job, and called them long distance and say, I quit. <laughs> He said, so you gonna quit now? I said, yeah, because you wouldn't give me the shot that you promised me, so I'm done. I didn't have to go off, I didn't have to get kicked out, I didn't have, they didn't have to usher in the police to get me, I had to maintain control. And daddy remind me, boy, you moving all the way out there for 84 cents more. I said, yeah, daddy, because they won't give me a shot. Let me just share with you. Sometimes the amount of money you make does not add up to the benefits you can get. All right. Put your confidence more into the benefits than you do into the amount per hour. That's right. 
dream. That's right. And it's been, it's been all rocketing ever since. I mean, every job has been skyrocketing ever since. I, I look at my, my diary, and I think women call it diary. I look at my ledger, my, my journal that I wrote to God, and I was praying in 1985 for two major things. Number one, I got a job now, God. Give me a, a Christian supervisor that will understand that I, I got to be in church on Sunday. And number two, bless me to make $20,000 a year. That was my prayer. I just wanted to make $20,000. I, I just wanted to make twenty. Brother Joseph, I just wanted to make $20,000 a year. I was going to be satisfied. But the God that we serve, he blesses us with stuff we, we can't even imagine. He does it because we are able to maintain control. So college is important. The next thing that puts pressure on children is driving. The stress that comes with it. The impatience that comes with driving. Don't get in a hurry. Let your grandmama show for you Hazel as long as she will. You got to show for me. And every time she starts driving, sit in the back seat and cross your legs and cross your arms. There is no pressure there. You don't have to tell her watch that car or anything. She going to look out for her baby sitting in the back seat. Yeah. Driving put pressure on children. The next thing is athletics. They are under pressure to win. And they, they've come to the conclusion, Braylon, if I don't win, then I'm not worthy. Let me share with you. You got to learn to be under control even when you lose. And then they put out songs like, uh, I just keep on winning, keep on winning, keep on winning. But we have to teach them how to lose with dignity. How to I learned early how to lose with dignity. Because I, I bought a girl a little ring, you know it didn't cost very much in, in junior high school, it didn't cost much. I bought a girl a ring and found out that after weeks was taken out. I learned how to lose. And after weeks, there's a guy next door to me. We grew up like brothers. We, we ate off each other's table. But the fact of the matter is, I gave Jeanette a ring and after weeks was taken out. And right to this day, we call each other's parents aunties and uncles. And, and my mama still lives right next door to their house. And tell you, let me tell you, folk will let you down. And I had to learn how to lose and how to, I mean, my heart was so broken. I mean, I was so crushed. Brother Whitlock, I was so crushed, man. I, I was blown away. I had spent a total of $10 on that ring, and she playing me like that. She played, I had to learn how to lose. And on the baseball field, I had to learn how to lose. And if you learn how to handle your losses, you won't jump off buildings when you lose your 401k. If you teach your children how to lose now, they won't commit suicide when things go wrong in their lives. That's right, Pastor. The next thing they talk about is finances. You need to know how to handle money. Teach our children how to handle money. We, we, we see girls in the African American community dropping it like it's hot and don't have a dime to their name. We have to teach them how to budget. We have to teach them, and let me tell you, young men, everybody's not gonna be a successful rapper. That's right. Everybody is not gonna be an entertainer. Everybody is not gonna, more people that, that miss it than make it. One million boys, the year that Michael Jordan went pro, one million boys had decided that they were going to take Michael Jordan's job. Only 1,500 of them even played in the college ranks. Only, only 200 over a five year period went to pro from one million. So you have to find a way to make money to survive other than athletics and entertainment. That's right. And then those who went pro, they either got hurt and they lived their lives four years in the pro ranks. So you work all your life to build up to four years and then you stop getting paid. So don't let athletics and their finances get upside down. And the last thing, the 10th thing is growing up. They say young people have issues with growing up now. 
I would ask Braylon to take his mask off so y'all can see his peach fur coming in. But it's all a part of growing up. And when, when boys and girls are, are growing up, their minds, their emotions are racing because they've never seen or, or ever heard or ever experienced things like they used to experience them. Boys begin to look at girls a different way. Girls begin to look at boys a different way. I just thank God that boys are looking at girls and girls are looking at boys. I, I, that's enough for me to shout about right there. Amen. Growing up has become an issue to them, but the text declares that we have to have control, we have to have rule over our own body. Because when we don't have control, we're like a city that walls are torn down. And when you have a city who, that has no walls, then it becomes vulnerable. Anything can come in, anything can rape, anything can rob, anything can, can abuse our youth and our young people. I've been talking much about youth and young people, but let me just share with you, there are some senior saints in the same predicament. And the final thing I want to say to you right before I talk about the fact that Jesus paid it all, there are resources. And the church has done our young people a terrible disservice because there are pastors and preachers who tell our young people, bring me all your problems, I can handle them. But we need to make sure that we submit ourselves to the resources that God has placed on planet Earth. Yes, yes. There are professionals. How many people here go to the doctor when they hurt you? When you're in physical pain. All right. Why you don't go to the doctor when you're mentally hurting? In our communities, we have told young people, if you go to a therapist or a counselor, then you're crazy. Uh -oh. Let me tell you something. If you don't go to a therapist or a counselor, you're going to go crazy. You really gonna have, let me tell you, issues are coming at us one after the other. We, we ought to submit to Christian counseling. That's right, that's right. They are professional. I, there are people, and see, preachers have to stop being so proud of what they are called to do. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my calling, I, I can fix this. I'm gonna just tell you honestly, I can't fix it. I can't, I'm not, I'm not trained. I, I was going to get my master's in, in, in counseling, but when I saw all this legal stuff I had to go through, and, and all of this, this Texas, state of Texas regulations, I, thought, I ain't doing this. No, I'm not doing this. I changed mine quickly from counseling to Christian education. Because there are professionals who love this stuff. And so when people have come to me, and it's over my head, I give them two or three different counselors' names. Right. Counselors that I trust. Resources that they can get so they don't have to think about suicide. They don't have to think about life going the wrong way. And, and not only young people, older people or senior saints need to know too. There are resources out there. And I'm willing to give you some. It is more important to me that you come back whole than to sit around me and talk about my past and say you're going to handle it. That's right. One pastor got terribly upset because one of the members went to a counselor. And I'm looking at him like, man, you did that woman a terrible disservice. You, you don't have not one iota of training in therapy, and you're going to tell her to come to you, you're going to fix it. You can't even fix yourself. And it tells me that you need counseling just for thinking like that. That's right, right. But they, they, they sit on their throne, and they want you to think that they're the boss of the hot sauce while lives are going down the drain. We all need, let me tell you, preachers need counseling. How many of y'all know preachers need counseling? Somebody said that bald head was standing up there needs counseling right now. <laughs> now what does it look like? Me telling you I'm going to fix your problem when I got all these issues too. If you don't believe I got some issues, ask Sister David. She got a cabinet of them. She can just turn one page out of the other and say, he got an issue. Yes, yes, yes. She just put up with me. 
But we have to get to a point in our lives where we stop being so selfish that we let people's lives go down the drain while we stand there and talk about, yeah, the Lord's going to fix it. God is able to fix it through therapists and counseling. That's right. That's yeah. right. At least twice a month I go to a, a physical therapist. It would make no sense for me to go to a physical therapist that's supposed to be working on my body if I don't go to a, a psychological therapist. A Christian therapist? I mean, there are some times, let me tell you, there are some times that preachers just get all so out of whack. I mean, their brain, say yes, yeah, since we love, they just think differently. <laughs> well, she almost got up running around the room. <laughs> Them there preaching something else. <laughs> but you got to make sure that you have control. Get control. Stop raising your voice. Stop increasing the temperature. Bring the temperature down. When people make you mad, trust God to make it whole. Yes. Yes, he will. Don't fly out the him. Communication is a, is a good thing when it's done properly. Just be calm, cool, and collected. And watch God operate. Yes, there is no greater chaos on planet Earth today than it was when Jesus was here. And you know the story. Jesus lived in chaos and he died in chaos. Made him carry his own cross. That's enough to go crazy right there. Mama and them used to do that. Go out there and get your own switch to whip you. That's crazy to me. And if you come back with a little one, oh, you're going to get beat with that one. And then you got to go get another one. They act like they want you to come back with a bat. So you would never do it again. Jesus the Christ had chaos. He had to carry his own tree. We got to get a, get, get a switch. He carried his own tree of a skull hill called Calvary. He was fixing it for you. He was making it right for you. He was giving resources for you so you can be under control. Young people, when you're pulled over by a police officer, you need to be under control. Let him do his shenanigans. You be under control. Trust Lord. Trust what God has done in the situation. Jesus died on Calvary for you to be under control. They buried Jesus in a borrowed tomb for your control. And he rose early that third day morning for your control. The door of the church is open. There may be some here today who has some who have just lost control. I want to pray with you and pray for you. And if you have not received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. You need to get to know him. He can help you with your control issue. I dare tell you that everybody in the room today need Jesus at the stirring wheel. Jesus at the helm. Too often, too often, too many times we, we take the wheel and tell Jesus, you just ride in the back. I had a chance to ride a boat this weekend. And not one single time did I tell the captain, let me drive. But we're always telling Jesus, Jesus, let me drive. I can handle this. You need to know Jesus. The door of the church is open. Have you trusted him as your personal Savior? This is your moment. If you never trusted him, will you bow your head with me and just believe the story of over 2,000 years ago? Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. He he gave up the ghost. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. Can you trust that today? And if you can, just bow your head with me and repeat after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I 
believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, we believe that you're now born again. There may be others who struggle with this life as I do. Songwriter says, I went to sleep on top of the world. And I woke up with the world on top of me. If that's you today, let me, let me pray with you. Lord, Father God in heaven, we thank you. For these who are saved, we thank you, Lord, for those who are trusting you. Those who are going through emotional wrecks. Those whose physical bodies are in danger. We ask you to touch those who are struggling in their spiritual lives. Draw them near to you. Draw them closer to you. Bless them to walk in you. Bless our church to be a church that can reach the community for Christ. As the disciples, the apostles turn the world upside down. Give us power, give us hope, give us strength to turn the world upside down. That men, women, boys, and girls will lay down their evil ways. That they will walk with Jesus the Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church. Will you come? Will you join us? Here at the church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Here at the New Beginning Church. If you want to join who are listening online, you can inbox me and let me know you want to join the New Beginning Church. We will welcome you. If you've received Christ or you've rededicated your life, your life during this broadcast, inbox me and let me know. I want to rejoice with you and thank you for, for joining this family of faith. Thank you so much for involving yourselves in our, our Sunday morning service. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is offering time. It is time to give, give to the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, raise your hand way in the air and you will be served. Please raise your hand. Those who are listening online, you can you can send uh, your Zell, your money to Zell at lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your tithes, offering, and your sacrificial gifts to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for money. We thank you for increase. We thank you for income. We thank you for blessing us financially. We ask you to bless every giver. Bless every giver in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. We ask this side to stand. Follow the young men from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes offering and sacrificial gifts.
Sunday. Uh, Saturday is the walkathon or ride-a-thon or the, or the run-a-thon. It will be right here at Tom Bass Park. If you're not walking, please give. If you're not running, please give. If you're not cycling, please give. Come on out and uh, we're going we're gonna to cycle and we're going to run and walk for this worthy cause. The roads give a uh, free mammogram to women who do not have insurance, but somebody has to pay for it. So we want to always contribute we want to always give as we do every year we give financially to the roads and so they will be coming to give us an update on next sunday so please ma'am please sir prepare uh, to give to the roads amen please ma'am please sir prepare to give to the roads i'd like to see you out there next saturday uh the forecast says we're going to have good weather between 55 and 75 degrees that's good cycling weather there yeah. That's good running weather. That's, that's good walking weather. Come on out and be a part. If you can't walk or run or ride, come on out and enjoy the weather and support us financially and support us uh, in our efforts because uh, our goal this year uh, is uh, $5,000. Our, our goal this year is $5,000. This year is $5,000. $5,000. $5,000. So I'm taking the lead on this this year. So I want you to make sure you support my efforts. I, I don't want to be a leader that's just taking a walk. Uh, uh, New Beginning has never allowed me just to take a walk. And whenever you have a leader that's leading and there's nobody that's following, he's just taking a walk. So New Beginning, turning hearts, and our friends and our neighbors, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, join us in supporting the roads on next Saturday, October, October 30th. Amen. We have Mr. and Mrs. Joseph present with us. We'll ask Mr. and Mrs. Joseph to stand. We have Mr. and Mrs. Joseph to stand. Uh, they gave me the honor of performing their wedding out in the country part of Wallace, Wallace Texas. I mean, we drove, we saw stuff that we saw in Mississippi as we drove, we drove out there. They had this luxurious wedding out in Wallace, Texas on the outside. This is Mr. and Mrs. Aaron Joseph, and we're so glad that they're here to, to be a part of our service today. Thank you so much for coming, and thank you for being a part of it. So if y'all want to say hello to us, say hello to us. This is what, this is what he did. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being a part, part of our service. Thank you for visiting with us. Please feel free to come back again. I, I have this card. I, I'll let you look at it when it's over. Sister, Sister Paul, I'll let you see it when it's over. Thank you so much uh, for joining us to the, Joseph, to the Joseph family. Thank you so much for, for being a part. In our prayer time, we are praying for Sister Shirley Bentley as she recovers from surgery. We're praying for the Rodriguez and Gavin, Gavin family. Uh, I don't know if it was this time last year while we were still in service. I told you that two sisters and one brother of Sister Rodriguez Gavin 
Uh, they come and they sit right back there next to the lady that's sitting on the back row. They sit right back there and and her two sisters and her brother had a, a major car accident in Mexico and she went to funeralize uh, her brother and one of the sisters passed away while she was there. Horrific, horrific, horrible um, tragedy. So we want to lift them in prayer. And we want to lift that family in prayer. And that, that as they go through these moments of bereavement, that God will lead, God protect, and direct them. That God will be a blessing to them. That God will continue to, to walk with them. So we want to pray for that family. Also, you want to pray for my family, the Wallace and the Davis family. Please, please pray for the Wallace family and the bereavement of my first cousin. Uh, they, they found him uh, expired in the bathtub. So we want to, to lift this family in prayer. And as we go through, through our hardships, let me tell you, death is doing his job. And it's taking us out of here any sort of way. So we need to pray. There's no such thing as being prayed up. We need to pray continuously and pray, pray without, pray without ceasing. God has has blessed us to be here, so we can pray for those who are going through. And if it's not your family today, just give it a moment. Just give it a moment, and uh, and it will be your family sooner or later. We want a sister Orr's husband is here. Brother Orr, will you stand, please? Brother Orr, that's, that's sister Orr's husband. I saw her this morning. She said, I said, you brought your husband? I brought my husband. <laughs> Amen. This is Carolyn's brother. That's Carolyn's, Carolyn's oldest brother. Many of you already know him. And also, that is Gable's dad. And it is Ashi. Ashi's dad. Our, our saxophonist. That is his this is his father, and he's so glad that uh, that he is he is playing with us. We're glad to have Ashi with us. We're, we're glad to have him a part of our group. Amen. Amen. Hey, next month, next month we're gonna go back to family members praying. We're gonna go back to family members praying. If you're thoroughly, fully vaccinated, uh, we want you to volunteer to pray. Uh, pray uh, doing devotion starting starting next month. We want to make sure that we all get involved in calling on the Lord publicly. Amen. Uh, we don't want after what God has taken us through and allowed us to He has He has taken us through it the last two years. You ought to be willing to stand for the Lord and call on Him publicly. And you don't have to pray like anybody else. You don't have to act like anybody else. You don't have to shout like anybody else. Just talk to the Lord about it. So starting the first Sunday of next month, we want to go back to family members praying. And if you are ready to volunteer, please see me after church. We want to make sure that you get involved in praying. Amen. Let the church say amen. Sister Shirley Bentley. We ask you to touch and heal her body, Lord. We call on you, Jehovah Rophi, the one who heals us, the one who blesses us. We ask you to heal her body, strengthen her with a speedy recovery. In Jesus' name. We pray for the Rodriguez and Galvan family. 
we pray, Father God, that you soothe their pain, that you comfort them in times like these, that you continue to walk with them and bless them. Lord, many of us don't know what the situation is all about. We don't feel their pain. We don't know their hurt. But Lord, we pray and we lift them before you that you would heal and touch them. God, we come praying for the Wallace family. We pray, Father God, that you bless this family. Bless my family that we will reach to you. That we will lift our voices to you. We will cry out to you. That you will comfort us in times like these. Bless us, Lord, that we will always look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join by saying, Amen. Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. God bless you. John 12, 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.